session about design patterns in JavaScript and TypeScript. I know it's something that uh, we deal every day with it, but uh, the, the focus of this session is try to understand uh, how we implement these patterns in our projects or identify where we use them and other kind of stuff. Uh, let's kick off, but before I start, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, I'm Hopse, I'm from Mexico. I am working in software since two years, two years and I've been supporting a variety of projects uh, with some clients. Uh, I have more than seven years of experience uh, working as a software engineer in a lot of services, API, web UIs, or working as a full stack developers, right? I'm going to start with this first question. I want to hear some uh, voices for the audience, but the question is, have you ever come across with this, uh, with code like this? Do we have any volunteers who wanna share something? Uh, guys, so, uh, you can use for this chat or maybe raise your hand or just unmute. Anyone? Sorry, could you repeat the question? Maybe I can. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, I was saying that if you see in this the, the image of the code, um, the question is: Have you ever come across with code like this? I know it's. We can see it. Okay, it's fine. It's just a class, but there's something that if we know about patterns, we can identify that probably something is working. But in terms of principles of solid and so on, it's something right over here. It looks like a container. So we're just adding the user to the list, removing user from the list and do something with this list actually, yeah. Sending emails and yeah. So I don't know how it's called. Yeah, but yeah. I understand what is going on. For sure, no worries. I'm going to explain you quickly. Basically, you're right. This is just a class where we we can add, remove some users for, for a list. Perhaps this list is for uh, one uh, purpose. But essentially, if we try to follow the solid principles, uh, the single responsibility uh, principle, it's the most important here because this class just means that we're going to uh, store users or something like that. But here we are integrating some kind of additional methods uh, like this one, the send email to user or calculate discount for user. It's fine, it will work, but in terms of uh, good practices, these methods should be in another class so that we can have uh, a good code and better approach for uh, our team developers and so on, right? That's the question, but essentially it's just that. Let's move forward. Our agenda for today is to uh, try to identify uh, what is the patterns, how are they classified, why are they important in our software development because it's something that probably we don't know we use them or probably yes, but it's better to refresh or have more details about them. And we're gonna see a kind of most common design that we use or some of them. And I'm gonna share you some kind of demo about it. Let's continue. Uh, the second question, what is a design pattern? Does anybody has an idea or, or what is the first thing that come in your mind about this question? In general, we can say it's a good practice that should be reused. For sure, yeah, a good practice, yeah. That, that's, that's what I wanted to hear. Essentially, yes, you're right. A design pattern, it's like, a, a, I'm gonna give an example, like an architectural blueprint for a house, right? If you want to build a house, you uh, need to look for an architect who is going to uh, create some blueprints and going to specify, okay, in this place, it's the room, in other places, the kitchen and so on, right? Basically, this blueprint, we're going to give us an, a structure of the house, but uh, it's not the, the final solution. It's just like, a, okay, we have something, some diagrams, some some figures in the blueprint where we can identify these things. But yeah, essentially, as you say, it's in a nutshell, I can say it's a technique to solve an issue in the software design. Because with these techniques, we can identify 
okay, this technique will help me out to solve this issue or this kind of approach that we need to solve for, for our software. Probably if we are working with uh, some kind of sockets or authentication, we can use this approach. Basically, that's the, the, the design pattern. A way to identify and, or, or, or see what is, what is the result at the end, but we need to identify and look for the implementation, right? That's actually uh, uh, what is a design pattern. And I'm going to continue. How are they classified? Okay. This is a good question. Um, basically in software development, we have three types of classification for the design pattern. The first, first one is the creational pattern. As its name says, oh, sorry, creational patterns. As its name saying, it's the ones that we use for creating objects and we can reuse code along uh, our application. The second one are the structural patterns. Those are the ones that are uh, classes that are interconnected each other in big projects or large structure. Uh, these patterns are very really interesting. We're gonna see some demo with the decorator pattern. In the last one is the behavioral patterns. These ones, uh, uh, the main focus is have a good communication between the assignments or responsibilities between the objects. Try to uh, to see what's going on with a, a class or if we need to notify something. Basically, these patterns are really useful if we want to deal with something like that. Okay, let's move forward. Uh, why are they so important? Okay. This is another question that uh, as de developers, we need to uh, know or be aware of these patterns exist and they provide us good solutions in the software development. For instance, um, we are working in a team uh, with our teammates and trying to identify some requirements and our project manager asks us, okay, we have the requirement uh, for getting this kind of information, but we don't need to use third-party libraries such as Redis for uh, store cache in our application. So what is another approach that we can use? Basically, um, what we can do is if we know or if we are aware of these patterns, it's just try to identify which one is the better. For instance, in this quick example, uh, we can use this single pattern. Uh, we can use a third-party library for cache, but in this single pattern, we can use a, a, like a store, like a global store, and we can share information uh, with the Google application with this pattern and if we use them properly. So basically, uh, the design patterns give us quick solutions, improve our skills, and better understanding of the requirements that we need to uh, build in our software development lifecycle. Okay, o other important thing about the design pattern, and it's something that we need to write uh, properly, give us improvement in the maintainability and scalable code, because if we do something good at the beginning, we can do it better and make the application uh, can grow with the time. All right. Let's move forward with the most common design patterns. Um, the presentation is about JavaScript and TypeScript. Some patterns we can use in both, la in both languages, TypeScript and JavaScript. But as you know, TypeScript uh, it's, makes the implementation easier because we can, in design pattern, we have some strict rules that we need to follow to, uh, to meet the requirements. So because of the TypeScript and it's a static typing, we can do it. But in JavaScript, sometimes we need to make some modifications to understand it or implement it in the best way. Okay, let's start with the first uh, design pattern and the type is creational pattern. And this one is the factory. Um, I would like to discuss a lot of things about this pattern, but essentially I bet that you have used this pattern a lot, uh, a lot of times in your project and your software development, when you are working with database or models, some details. This is one example of the factory pattern. Uh, this allows us in, in a few words, create 
objects with a specific attributes methods that we use uh, for interact with our application or with some methods that we have, right? Uh, for give you an example, this pattern is very used in some um, third-party libraries uh, like ORMs, mo like Mongoose, SQLite, Prisma, type ORM. Those ones are one of the great libraries that we implement this pattern because we just need to specify some attributes uh, create our relationship between the tables and uh, specify some methods. And once we want to use them, we just invoke them, we pass some values, create these this objects, and we send it to DB. So basically, the process is the same for all these instances. So it's one of the, the biggest practice that we, we do every day with, with our applications. And just to, to summarize, this pattern, it's, it has three, uh, like three dependencies or three, three classification because there's the factory pattern that I discussed. The other one is the factory method. It's similar, but uh, as its name, it, the, the class should have a method to create objects. So basically you just call create my object that we wanna return you a, a, an object or an instance of it. And the last one, if we're talking about TypeScript and the abstract factory, as you can see, it's just a template where you can specify the attributes, the type of them, some methods, and that's all. Um, the next one, singleton. This pattern is, um, it's very hated for people, but other devs say, okay, this is a good one if you want to have some kind of redundancy on the data, concurrency, but it's good because uh, I had the, the opportunity to implement this pattern in, in one project and the project it was similar like the example that I gave you some minutes ago to have an application that we don't need to use cache like Redis. We need to use something different. And the only thing that came up, uh, it was to implement the single pointer because as its name says, we have one instance of the class and it, it avoids to have multiple instances of itself. So this means we just have one object in the entire application. And once we want to uh, check some attributes, we can get them from them. So basically in an, our project, we implemented, give us a good solution because uh, it was something like, okay, we need to implement um, a query, but this query only will be updated every two hours. So instead of uh, retrieving data from DB, we just retrieve data from the cache in this using this pattern, and it was a, an amazing solution. And to give you an example, because this is not, not complicated to understand, in the first image, we have JavaScript, and the second one is TypeScript. Basically, as you can see, it's a class where in the constructor, we have a, a validation. The validation is if exists an instance of it, it just return the instance. In case or not, we just return or create a new one so that we can initiate this, this, uh, this class, right? If we run this code in our application or, or in the console, we can see that, uh, for instance, here, we have the same code, but basically it's TypeScript. TypeScript, as you can see, we need to specify some attributes because it's a bit uh, strict to, to have this type of value, what returns and so on. So basically it's the same code, but if we print this information, we can see that the first object that we create and the second one, if we compare them, both are the same and the value random, which is just a, a number that it stores, is the same, right? because that's the object of this, uh, this pattern. Have the same or just have one instance of it. That's all. Let's continue this pattern, creational pattern. Okay, this is uh, one of my, my favorite patterns I use in some projects. Basically these patterns help us to create uh, objects step by step and it has flexibility in the way that we create objects. Let's gonna do it in a quick sample. I'm gonna share my, my Visual Studio so that you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, uh, can, can you see my, my screen? Yep, 
Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Thank you, Alana. Okay, let's start with this pattern. It's a builder pattern. It's creational and it's an essay. We need to create objects. So I have ready here a class which names is hero, right? And uh, with, with this class, we just need to receive in the constructor the name, superhero, skills, and publisher, right? So when I need to create, for instance, let me do it an example. I'm going to create a hero one, and I'm going to use a hero, right? Basically, in JavaScript, we can pass some arguments, or we can pass all of them. But basically, in if we are doing this in TypeScript, we're going to have some kind of alerts or uh, slint uh, complaining about we need to pass everything, right? But here we're just going to do an example. I'm going to pass a name. Our hero is Tony Stark. The second ball is Iron Man, which is the superhero, right? And let's print this in console. And so that we can see something, let me open this one. Okay. Mm, builder. Okay. Well, here we go. If I print the value, let me uh, make this bigger. If I print the value or our object, we have the name, the which is Tony Star and the superhero, which is Iron Man. But we can see the publisher and the skills are undefined, right? This is because JavaScript is not as strict as TypeScript is, but basically if we do this in TypeScript, um, we're gonna have some, some alerts, right? So, okay. This is the way that we create a, a, an object in JavaScript and it's fine and it can work. But if we want to implement the pattern the pattern says that we need to have a, a way to split the constructor because we can do a mandatory to pass all the arguments. We can do it step by step. And by doing this, we have this flexibility. What I mean is this, let me uh, remove this and I'm going to explain this hero. The pattern says that uh, to, to implement it, we need to have a builder. This builder is responsible for creating this these this objects. So let's take a look on this. This is the builder and in the construct, constructor, instead of having all the arguments, we have this method, the reset. It's one of the most important methods that our builder needs to have. Why? Because in this one, we need to uh, set uh, the default values for our object that we're going to create, right? This is a, a rule. The first one, have this uh, method reset. And the second important method that we need to have is this one, the build. Is the responsible who will create our object and will return an instance of it. This is the two uh, strict rules that we need to do if we want to implement this pattern. The other methods, it's just like uh, the methods that we want to implement to set some values, probably have some kind of logic here and so on. But basically this is the idea. Uh, I highlighted this part, return this. As you know, if we return the same, uh, if we use return this, we know that we are returning the same instance of the class that we are using. And this give us some kind of uh, nesting or chaining methods in, in our way that we wanna create our object. Let's gonna do it in example. Okay, uh, so what I was saying, we have build and reset. So basically this is how a builder needs to look. Have the constructor in set default values or invoke the reset method and have the build, that's all. Let's uh, use it in a practice, for instance, I need to, create my class about the hero builder. I'm gonna use it, hero builder. It's equal, equal to new hero builder. As you see, we don't need to pass anything here. We just, we just need to invoke the class. And now we can use our builder. Let's create our first hero and we just need to use the builder. Okay, how can I set the name? We just set the, use the method set name we can use Tony Stark. Okay, and we are using the approach of, of return this, we can uh, chain our method. So the second one is, okay, I wanna set the 
superhero. It's Iron Man. And I can continue setting all these values, right? As I can, as you can see the publisher and I can say, which is a Marvel Comics. And when I want to build this, this uh, object, the only way that we can do it is just invoke our metal build. And that's all, right? Let, let's take a look in the console. There you go. We have our hero, but we have a big difference. In the last example, we have some undefined values. Here, we have set up some default values because our builder, it's responsible to set this information in, in the creation, right? Because some fields are mandatory, their builder is responsible to set them at default or if the user pass the values, it, it's responsible to set its value. We have the name, the publisher, the skills returns an empty array, but we have it there and we have all the information here. Okay, but why this happened? Okay, this pattern, that's the way that we need to implement it if we want to have flexibility in our software development. Because sometimes we have some values, some of them we are waiting for them. So essentially this pattern led us to, to build objects with this flexibility, step by step. And that's all, right? Okay, so this is implementation in JavaScript. On TypeScript, we have a different approach. The, this is approach is a bit different because uh, the pattern uses some kind of uh, interfaces and one of the, these interfaces, let me go back to the presentation. Okay, okay, this one. If you see, we have this director, which is an, a, a class, right? This class, uh, it has its own purpose. I'm gonna explain it. Uh, uh, right now, but if you see, we have an interface which we can use it in TypeScript, and we have some classes that uses our builder. So basically, uh, if we're using TypeScript, we have this uh, advantage because we can use interfaces. We can have some other uh, useful tools that uh, TypeScript offers. So let's see the example. Uh, okay, well, I'm gonna pass it here. If you see. Basically, we have our interface. It's the same as the hero. We need to pass a name, superhero, skill, publisher, and some methods that are mandatory for, for this hero builder, right? Let's take a look in the class. If you see it, it's basically the same, but in type, TypeScript, we need to specify our uh, attributes at the beginning, and we have them in the constructor. Basically, it's the same. We have our builder, but here we are implementing our interface. This interface, it's like uh, our blueprint that it specify, okay, you need to have, uh, if you want to make this, this interface, you need to use these uh, attributes and methods. Okay, once we got them, we need to specify, basically the same. We have the constructor where we are setting as default value, or we can just invoke our method that I, discussed before, the reset. We have the same names, set superhero, set publisher. Basically it's the same just to assign the, the value that comes in the in the argument. And the difference is in TypeScript, TypeScript we need to specify the, the value that this method returns. In this case, we return the hero builder because we are using the approach of, of returning the instance of it. That's the the, the way. And the last one, the build uh, method, right? This build method will return us the same a class of our hero. And then we're going to reset it so that we can reuse this hero builder in other part of, of, the, uh, of the application. Okay, I'm going to close this and the director. Uh, let's see it in a few minutes. Basically, uh, I don't want to spend some time here. Basically, it's the same. If we uh, invoke our builder, uh, hero builder, we need to have it in one uh, variable and then we can start to set the values, the name, the 
the, the superhero, the skills, publisher, and then we're gonna build it. As you can see in the console, we have the information. Basically, it's the same behavior uh, that we have in JavaScript, but the difference is the, in, the use of inter interfaces, the typing, and so on. So it's something that allows us to have a, a better code in our application. But cool, basically, as you see, um, the builder and in JavaScript and in TypeScript basically are the same. But in JavaScript, we don't have the director. What is this director? Okay. Um, keep in mind that director is some kind of strict rules if we want to implement this pattern. But the director is responsible for to know what are the, the necessary uh, steps for creating uh, a, a, an object, right? That's the, the thing because the director knows, okay, I want to create a hero, for, for example, here. I know that every time I want to create a hero, I need to have the, the name and the superhero. That's the all. So the director, when we want to invoke it, is just to pass these two values and we're going to have the same behavior. But the director will set up as default all this value because he knows step by step how to build it. Right, let's take a look on of this example. I have the director, I create one instance of it, and I need to pass it the hero builder. Why? Because in the constructor, we are expecting the hero builder in the constructor, right? That's the 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 the, the specification here. And once I have the, the the instance of the hero director, I can use it. I just can invoke the create hero method which uh, receive as argument the name and the superhero. I just pass it there. And then I can just uh, create my, my hero, which is Batman in this example, right? We just need to invoke the method build and we're gonna create our object. Let's see the example. And there you go. It's the same behavior. As you can see, uh, we, our skills is, is an empty array and the publisher is an empty string. But basically, if we're using the approach of director, uh, give us some kind of, um, uh, it, it give us to, uh, to write all this code because uh, the director knows step by step what uh, arguments needs to create a, 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 an object as default. That's all. And we can set more steps here, but basically this will uh, increase our arguments and so on. But basically it depends on the, uh, the approach that you want to use. All right, let Sorry. me go. Uh, yeah. Say that director is the kind of factory here? Uh, yeah, it's like a good, good question. Uh, basically the director, uh, this pattern builder is a creational, exactly. We can say that directory is similar like the factory because it's responsible to use a method, which is create hero to uh, create our instance of, of, of the, the class, right? Basically, yeah, we can say it's similar. Keep in mind that the design patterns, some of them make some approaches from other design patterns. As you can notice, it's, it's a good observation about it. The directory, it's using the approach of the factory method because we have it here so that we can create object. Thank you, Ostap. Okay, uh, let me go back to my presentation. Uh, okay. Next slide is the behavioral pattern. Okay, uh, this pattern uh, is strategy. Okay, this pattern, we can find it in a plenty of application that it uses, but the focus of this pattern is try to um, reuse the, the, the structure of the class, but with different results, right? I'm gonna give you an example. For instance, uh, the example that I would like to use is, everyone has used Google Maps or some kind of service of maps in, in iOS and so on. When, when you are using a Google Maps and you want to go to a specific uh, location, just set the location in your application. And we have this kind of uh, ways to, to get there, right? For example, I want to take my trip walking 
by car, by train, by bus, etc. Right. Basically, all these features or options are the strategies. Why? Because the strategy, the strategy is is the same. We we need to get uh, to a location, but the strategy can depends of the decision of the user. Right. I want to get to the downtown by car, but tomorrow I want to get the downtown uh, by walking. So we are going to the same place, but we are using a different uh, way to to get there. Right. In the uh, behavioral pattern and strategy is the same. It, uh, on, in one example in this uh, pattern, it's the, the passport. I know if you work as a backend developer and you want to use authentication or authorization for some applications, if you use passport, it's one of the good libraries for this example. Because if you remember, we have passport, we have this method that calls authentication or something like that, but we just need to indicate or pass us argument, okay, this authentication will be by Facebook, by using Twitter, by using Google, and we're gonna authenticate the user because the passport knows that according to the value, the strategy that we are passing as argument knows how to interact or authenticate the user. So basically, that's the focus of this behavioral pattern. One class for different uh, solutions using the strategies. That's all. And give us uh, to scale our application in different ways. Because if we, for example, uh, the same example, Passport, if we want to authenticate users with another uh, provider, we just need to identify the provider, pass the argument, I want to uh, authenticate my user by using an Apple account. And that's all. We're going to use the same method, the same structure. And the strategy is responsible for doing the other steps. So in this example, they have the, we have the interface. That is the one that we need to uh, met in our classes. And the navigator, right? Which is the example that I give you. For instance, this navigator is the class that we need to uh, build the routes to get some places. That's all. Right, and the, the ways that we the strategies are uh, by road, by public transport, walking, so on. Basically, the example that I give you is related to this. The the uh, Google Maps is one example that we can identify. Why is this pattern about? All right, let's move forward. The next pattern is the observer. This is a good pattern, uh, and I know if you have worked with with sockets before basically it's the same behavior this pattern it's responsible to uh, have some kind of master class and this class will be responsible for subscribe users unsubscribe them and notify when something has changed in 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 the application or in its state right let's call it like its state because why let's assume uh, if you remember some years ago when the internet started, we have this kind of uh, chat rooms where you just type your name and you join to a to a to a room and you start to to chat with other people, right? So this is a good example. When you join in in the in the room, the uh, the this application is using this pattern, the observer, because when some user join in a room, appears a message. For instance, um, OSTAP has joined to the session. So this message can see it everyone because the, the pattern, it's listening that someone is new and needs to notify that someone new is in the chat and they can start to interact and so on. But what someone left the chat the the event is listening. Okay, this 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 new user has has gone. So we need to notify that he's gone, right? So it starts to notify. Okay, uh, this user has left the chat, and this is the pattern. It's responsible for listening some events, notify when something has changed or the user needs to know, and that's all. The example that I give you it's the WebSocket basically uh, is the same behavior, but in this part, it's more like uh, notify according to the events that it's happening in the application or in the process, or if we are using uh, this, this machine that we have in the banks where we can see the number and 
when you when the number change, you know when you need to to pass with the bank teller and so on. Basically, these applications are using this pattern, the observer, which is something that it's uh, watching when something is changed, something is new and needs to notify. That's all. And as you can see, well, in this example, we have uh, the manager, which is the one that we're gonna uh, store the listeners or the observers. The mandatory methods that we need to have are the subscribe, unsubscribe, and notify. Because if we are using or implementing these methods, we know that we are using this approach, the observer, right? Let's move forward and with our last uh, design pattern is a, structure, a structural pattern decorator. This is another one, uh, the uh, design pattern that I like to, to show you. I'm gonna give you a quick sample. Basically to have an idea of this is, this pattern, it's responsible to give you extra features to an object adding some new functionality, and that's all. If you have ever worked in React, for example, using a high order component, basically the same. We get a component that receive a component with new features. Basically, this is a decorator pattern. Or if we are working with Nest.js, we have this decorator where we involve them and add extra functionality to our method, it's the same. This pattern add functionality to an object or a class, that's all. But how it works, okay, we need to grab in or implement some kind of rules so that we can use this approach. For example, this is the real world analogy. This is a person and that's all, right? But if we grab this person with a sweater, okay, it's the same person, but it just have a sweater, right? That's all. But if we grab the same, uh, the previous person, which is this one, it's the same person with sweater and with a coat. That's all. So this pattern uh, let you get add extra functionality or extra features to your to to your object or your class. Let's. I'm gonna switch my screen. Let's see a, a quick example about it so that you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, observer, I'm going to open this one. Okay, we have here the observer. As you can see, let's, uh, oh, this one, no, sorry, the curator, sorry, my bad. Okay, this is our uh, pattern decorator, right? We have our component, which is just a class, and we are receiving in the constructor the name, and that's all. Okay, let's do it. We have our first product. We can use the class product component, and we just pass the name. We're gonna use a beer, right? Okay, if I just bring this product and I go to the console, let me close this. Um, let me change it, okay. If I print it, we can see that we have a beer, right? That's all. This is our product. Okay, let's take a look in the first decorator or what is this? Okay, the product decorator, um, it's the one that grab our first component and uh, give us this uh, capability to, to add, add extra features, right? So let's take a look. Um, product decorator, and we have the first decorator, which is commercial inf info decorator. This uh, decorator, what it's doing, okay, we receive a component, but we're gonna receive in the uh, constructor, the trade name and the brand, and that's all. This going to add extra features to our, uh, to instance, right? Let's take an example. Okay, we have our commercial info product. We, we need to instance them. We commercial, okay. We need to pass a product component, which is this one. We're gonna add it here. And we need to pass the trade name, okay. 
Uh, I think the trade name is Amstel. And the brand is Miklop. Good. We have, uh, we are grabbing our first component, which is the product. And we are adding the functionality of the commercial info product decorator, right? So let's uh, check how it works. Let me point it here. And I'm going to use the method get details, right? What is doing this method? Well, it's just uh, chaining our strings, right? Adding the functionalities and the first one that we have in the class. That's all. Let's see in the console. Okay. Our original pro, uh, class or object is a beer. We just have this name, beer. But if we are using our uh, decorator, we, are, we can see that we are adding extra functionality in our stream, right? Because we are adding the trade name, the brand, and we know the product. Basically, this is uh, the way that we can implement the decorator pattern. With a, uh, it allows us to add extra functionality to an object and the object it's the same all the time because we are just having a reference of it and adding these extra features. But okay, what's a good advantage of this um, design pattern? We can use it with this, we, we can mix the creators between of them because it doesn't matter uh, if we are passing a, a product or another decorator, we can pass a decorator in itself. Let's take a look. For instance, a store product. A store product decorator is another uh, class which receives a component and has the capability to add the price, right? That's all. Let's, uh, let's check it. We need to create an instance of it. A store product decorator. It receives a product component. If you see, this is uh, our product component. We just can pass it and we can add the, the price. For instance, in Mexico, uh, one bottle of beer costs about 22 Mexican pesos. And that's all, right? Let's take a look in the console and get details. And let's see. Cool. We have our original uh, product, which is the beer. We use our first decorator to add extra features, and we use a second decorator. We are uh, adding more features to our uh, second, uh, our first decorator. Sorry, we are adding the price. We know that the price is this one. We have some values for the second one, and the original is this one. So in this example, what I want to to to, sh to show you is this pattern led us to add extra functionality to our application to sorry to our objects to our classes because we are grabbing the object with new functionality that's all it's like i said before in react if we are using uh, high order components we are implementing this pattern in somehow but basically this pattern it's is it's that just grab an object give new powers and that's all all right, let me go back to the presentation. And well, I'm going to move forward to the final question is how to identify what design pattern to use and implement it in my project. Okay, this is a, a question that sometimes we need to uh, think about it. For instance, it's easier to identify what patterns to use if we are working in, from a scratch project. The reason is obvious. We, we are responsible to add this uh, functionality from scratch, create our own approach, implement these patterns or doing in this way. You, you are free to do it, right? Uh, but the only thing that is you need to meet your requirements. It becomes a bit complex when you are working in existing project because you need to go deeper into details in the project, check how it was built, if, if the project is using some classes, some objects, some patterns and so on. It becomes uh, a bit complex, but if you have this knowledge or if you are aware of the pattern, you can identify, oh, in this line, uh, the developer used this pattern and probably I can reuse it in other uh, part of my project, basically. That's the way that, 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 that's a tip that I can give you here, but 
other tips that I can have or I can share you is you need to analyze and identify the behavior of your app because um, most of the time, if we are using frameworks, these frameworks all are using these patterns and we don't even know it, right? It's something that I noticed when I started to study this, this topic. I knew that the design pattern exists, but I ne I've never been aware that I was using them because, you know, it's something like you do day by day and you need to uh, accomplish your deadlines and deliver your product. Okay, that's okay. But if you take a look, take a moment and identify or analyze what are you doing, you probably know that, okay, I'm using this pattern because I'm implementing these and so on. And yeah. Another way to implement it is identify if you are, for instance, the factory uh, pattern, it's one of that we use basically in our projects. For instance, I'll give you an example. If you are working with classes or uh, handling some errors in the application when something is wrong and you want to have some kind of logs, okay, we can use this approach, create a class, and this class, we can reuse it for setting logs in a DB or in a file or in Winston, whatever. But the idea is have a class where you can reuse it along your application. That's the purpose, right? And finally, well, I would like to share some useful uh, resources and links. Um, Probably you can you, you know refactoring uh, point guru. It's one of the best. Uh, I I would say the best web website where you can find information about design patterns, and it has some examples. So probably you can uh, check them later on if you want to have more details about them. And the good thing of this website is. It's not just for TypeScript. You can see the same example for different programming languages. So it's a good uh, application. And the other are some uh, sites where I take some information to, to share you today in this presentation. And if you want to take a look in the uh, repository that I create for this session, OK, this is my personal GitHub account so that you can clone the, the example and take a look or whatever, right? Um yeah, I think that's all from my end. 